Yeah, so like, so the accident more so, you know, first first thing came on mind, like I said in the video, was just to make sure that everybody was okay, uh, that there was nobody that was, you know, had fatally passed away from it. Um, and then when I got back to my truck, the second thing was I was pissed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, um, you know, I haven't had no accident. Low Shine Parks. Back on the Lockout Men channel, man. I'm back, and I'm better than ever. ever. I'm man, bro. So let's let's go back, man. I think the last time that we yeah. chopped it up, we talked a little bit about your fleet, Parts Motor Group, and how hard it is to find drivers to drive for you mm -hmm. as a YouTuber and stuff like that. You guys can go back and we'll check out that episode between me and Loshan. I've been following this guy for a good minute since his prime days, since the since the team driving with uh, with Big TB all the way up until you got your fleet and then all of a sudden, man, you just uh, you you just ghosted everybody. <laughs> True. You recently came back in the one video that I checked out that was very, very deep. A lot of drivers don't don't talk about depression, mental awareness, the, the struggles that we go through as truck drivers. And in particular, us being YouTubers, it's just we just need to take a break from everything. So you took that break. You recently came back. And uh, and now you're back on YouTube sharing your your story, man. So what went on, bro? What 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 happened? Well, you know, a lot of people think it was like a hiatus, um, and it really wasn't even a hiatus. I didn't I didn't expect to be gone from YouTube as long as I did. It's kind of like you know, it was like make videos, and, and you get kind of caught up in work, and then it just got to a point where it's like. You know, I didn't have time to be making videos at that time. Uh, so for the most part, that's what it was. It didn't really have anything to do with, you know, I, I know a lot of people feel like people, you know, kind of ran me off of YouTube, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was the case, bro. Like, can't nobody run me off of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Period. Right. But it, it just was dealing around with just work and, and spending time with my family for the most part. Time that was missed from me, you know, spending, what, eight, seven, eight years of being OTR. Uh, so it was just spending time with the family that, you know, didn't have, that I wasn't spending with them for me being over the road, just doing that and also running the business. And it just got to a point where it just wasn't enough time in the day for me to do videos. I wanted to do videos, but it's kind of like you have, well, you know, as a YouTuber, you know, you got that urge to want to put a video out, but then you end up getting occupied and you're like, you know what, forget it. I'll do a video next day, and next day, goes on the next day and next day. And then before you know it, you just ain't putting nothing out. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's kind of what I ran into as far as with, my YouTube channel. It was never the intent to be gone for as long as I was, but you no, know, it just kind of felt that kind of way too. And you're right. You know, when it's coming up with with content, coming up with with stuff to talk about, coming up with something that that interests people, it's kind of it's it's kind of difficult on a day to day basis. Do I want to put this video out, or do I want to talk about this subject? Well, maybe if I talk about this subject right here. Nobody will be interested in it because you know, as my channel, people are interested in, in different type of topics. Now, I, I, I try to confirm or conform to what the people want to listen to, but it, it just came to a point like I, I don't care. I'm just going to go ahead and, and talk about what I want. But I, I see the analytics. I see the views. I, I just recently talked about the Sonya Massey situation, big mm -hmm. situation. Young lady got killed by a cop shot in the face. Big topic all over all over the internet. Right. I, I I put my commentary, my opinion on the situation, and oh yeah, my my video didn't even crack the the three four hundred viewpoint. You know what I'm saying? But if I talk about if I talk about some big booty lady throwing straps over uh, doing flatbed work <laughs> in a dress, then everybody in their mama it cracked the one thousand viewpoint. You know what I'm saying? But I don't conform. Yeah. I don't conform to anybody. You me. I, I don't conform to anybody. Yeah. YouTube. I, I talk about what I want to talk about. So I, I feel you on that. 
All right, man. So, all right. So you back and you did touch on the business of Parts Motor Group in your mm -hmm. in your previous live and on the background. You did mention to the fact that you don't you don't want to touch on it no more because you spoke on it so much. And I I understand. So I'll just direct people over to that particular video. I'll link it in the in the description below. But uh, but it was a good run with Parts Motor Group, though. Yeah. You. You you ran that for 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 a little minute before you decided to go go into FedEx, man. How how long how how long ago together before before you uh, put it on the shelf? Yeah, so it was, we was working on year number six of uh, having the fleet, and I mean, it, like like you said, you know, it, it ran its course. It was it was a it was a good thing. Uh, kind of, I like like you said, I spoke about it on my video already. Um, I kind of made I made a a drastic decision to kind of like close it like out of nowhere, out of the blue. And it wasn't on no like the company was going under or none of that because it still was making you know really, really good money. It just got to a point where I got tired of pulling from other investments that I had going on to funnel in the trucking, right? Um, and I've been doing, of course, I've been doing that for years, but it just was one day I woke up and I seen I had to put some more money over to the trucking side. Uh, and I was like, y'all, I don't feel like doing it no more. I'm tired of doing that. You know what I mean? And I was like, cool. Uh, yeah, we're closing the doors in two weeks. You know, that's, that's, that's how it kind of went. You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't want to keep doing that. I got tired of pulling funds from other investments, like I said, to kind of keep it afloat. And now when I look back on it, I kind of wish that I wouldn't have done that because I wish I would have kind of kept it because it was doing good. And, you know, we was in the process of, of getting new trucks in and, and turning the other trucks that we had over and get new ones in and spoke with the drivers that I had with me about getting those new trucks. And we was all looking forward to it. And it was just kind of like when I woke up and I seen, I was like, damn, I got to put more money over here into the, into the trucking company. I, right, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. And that's kind of like how, how it went about, you know, me bringing it to a, to a halt. But more so than anything, it just, you know, I, I talk about the mental health aspect to it. You just, you deal with so much whenever you're a fleet owner or you're running a fleet, however people want to look at it. You know, not only do you have to deal with your problems, right, that you may be having going on in life, but when you have a fleet and you have drivers, you take on whatever problems the drivers may have. If they got problems going on at home, then you kind of got to be that, that superhero. And you know, for the most part, I would probably say more so than more so than anything is that I just kind of was like, I'm tired of the weight. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the weight on my shoulders, man. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, but it ran its course. It was good for almost the six years. And um, I do miss it. Uh, would it be something I would consider doing again down 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 the line in the future? Yeah, because I feel like if I if I succeeded in it one time, I could succeed again, and I would probably just switch a couple of things around that I didn't do well at having the fleet, and you know, kind of switch those things around. But in a nutshell, man, it was good, and um, the drivers that we had, we appreciated them. They stayed. With, we had some drivers that stayed with us for a while. I'm talking about years. We didn't have a high turnover. We didn't have a revolving door. You know, when people came in with us. Um, we treated them fairly and we, we treated them well. So, you know, they didn't want to leave. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do it again in the future, you know. When it came time uh, to sit down with your family and you going over the process of letting the company go, I'm, I'm sure you and your significant other, your partners in in the business and all like that, you're sitting down, you're talking and say, hey, I'm thinking this, which way to go. How how did your drivers take it when you when you and your family came together and said this is what i'm going to do as far as the company goes how did the drivers take it because yeah like you said you you had drivers that been with you for quite a while obviously you treated them you treated them well and i i met a few of your drivers as a matter of fact the one young lady i talked to i forgot her name red something i can't i can't remember her name but oh yeah red duchess red yeah duchess. red duchess yeah 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 nice lady i met her a little while back and yeah she she drove with you and she spoke highly of you so how how did the drivers take it when when you came and told them the situation? Well, it was kind of bittersweet for them, um, you know, because it was kind of like out of once again it was out of the blue. It was like, yo, wait a minute, we was just talking about you know getting getting new trucks and then 
you know, like now you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do it uh, anymore. So it's kind of like one of those, like out of the blues, like, you know, how did, where did it come from? What happened? And I explained it to my drivers as well, you know, and kind of told them, you know, my, my, how I was feeling and what my thoughts were. Also yeah. that for my drivers that were, which we were on the T-Force, we was pulling T-Force freight uh, going terminal to terminal. I left it with them where, hey, listen, uh, if you guys enjoy the T freight contract, you keep the same dispatcher, you know, which we was running with uh, for years. And I, I left them with the option: if you guys like doing this work, then what I can do is I can hook you guys up with where I'm leasing the trucks from, and you guys can, you know, kind of take over the leases and stay on with T Force. So, you know, don't want you guys to feel like you're out of a job. You're not. I've already spoken with T Force, and they're willing. They're more than willing to bring you guys on independently if that's what you guys want to do. So um, a couple of the drivers, I want to say three, I want to say three of the trucks that I had, they uh, took over the leases and stayed, and they stayed on with T-Force, which was a beautiful thing because they already had the communication. They've been driving years with the dispatch that we had. Um, so nothing really changed for them other than them picking up the truck, uh, taking on the truck you know, themselves. Gotcha. And then I had two of the drivers that, you know, kind of was like, well, Lashawn, since you're not going to be the fleet owner anymore, um, you know, we'll, you know, they want to do go elsewhere. So, uh, but that option was open to everybody to where I was going to hook them up as far as with the direct contact to being able to take over lease and they could stay on the contract that they was with. So I wanted to make sure I didn't leave them in a situation where it's like, yo man, pull up, park the truck. Y'all ain't got no jobs, figure life out from there. You know what I mean? I wanted to make sure that I did leave them adequate enough time that if they were going to leave uh, T-Force, that they did have something else lined up. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so uh, after everything said and done, you, 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 you pop back on the scene. Everybody was surprised when you came back on the scene in a, in a <laughs> FedEx truck. Everybody like, yo. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it's, what, 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 the, what? So yeah. we we as truck drivers, especially like when we start, everybody speak of of high paying companies to go with once they get their experience. They speak of Walmart. They speak of Old Dominion. They speak of LTL. But I'm not sure if UPS is still in existence. I think you you mentioned T Force. Did did T Force? take over ups so t-force bought out ups freight oh, okay um ups is still ups but ups freight is no longer okay okay so yeah at that time before t-force it was it was ups freight and then the almighty fedex how did you how, how did you manage to get uh, to get on with fedex and what was the what was the reason behind uh, you getting back into trucking or you yourself getting back behind the wheel yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you know, I'm a truck driver in nature. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how that's how you know I, I started was with, with trucking. So, you know, trucking has never left me. It's always been in me. So, um, you know, kind of getting on with with uh, freight. Well, I'm about to say Freightliner. Getting on with FedEx. So, how FedEx works with FedEx Ground? Because I'm on with FedEx Ground. We're not drivers for the company or the corporation FedEx. All of that stuff is basically contracted work. So, there's contractors that are in FedEx that um, have routes and stuff like that. So, you know, you drive for the contract line for FedEx. The only people that drive for FedEx that are on the FedEx Corporation side is those of FedEx Express um, and also FedEx Freight. Those drivers are through, you know, corporate drivers. So FedEx Ground, <clears throat> excuse me, is all contracted, contracted out. So I ended up finding that. I basically just went on Craigslist, to be honest with you. And I just was looking like, hey, uh, you know, check the local area where I stay in Charlotte, who's hiring for drivers. And they had a post up there uh, saying, you know, this, this contractor is looking for a driver. You pull FedEx freight, terminal, terminal, drop and hook. And these are the hours of it. And, uh, and this is what the pay was going to be. So the pay looked great. The hours looked great. And uh, contacted them and the rest is history and started driving for that contractor and been there ever since, which that was been there since like for like a year now with them um, which i think my year was in june if i'm not mistaken so uh yeah a little bit over a year now with them and so that's that's what's been going on with me and yeah i made my return to youtube it's funny listening to your story and all like that i'm i'm, I'm enjoying the conversation from one boss to another boss how how does it feel now to be on the other side of the spectrum bro you you was calling the <laughs> shots at one point and now you're you're back as a driver 
a taken. I, I don't want to say taking orders or anything like that, but that's about right. That's about right. Yeah, yeah, taking orders from another boss. Like how how does that how does that mentality work? Because I'm sure some of the stuff that you did and they did is kind of like clashing. Like huh, I ain't do it that way. Mm -hmm. Like like are you sure? Because if I do it that way. I could do it this way and it works. You, you see where I'm going with that? How, how, how is that yeah. working out for you? So I'm going to tell you, it's like a humbling experience, right? So it's kind of like, so I, I, I'm going to go back a little bit. So when I first started my fleet, I worked um, locally as well, hauling or pulling fuel locally for a company called Team Logistics. And I had my fleet at that time. My fleet was going good. I probably didn't have as many trucks at that time either. I probably probably had maybe about four or five trucks. And my fleet got up to as high as, as, as high as 12 trucks. I had like four or five trucks. And uh, when I took that job, that probably played more in my mind of being like, yo, why am I working for somebody else? You know what I'm saying? When I got my own thing going on. So, you know, in that job, I think that I was more strong headed towards being like, yo, I ain't, I ain't doing this. You know what I'm saying? This don't make no sense. Why am I working with somebody else and I got my own thing going? But with the FedEx thing, I kind of went into it being more humble, right? Or being more like, um, this is how this person's operation goes, and I'm going to respect how their operation goes, and I'm not going to try to tell them how to run their business or nothing of that nature. I just, you know, I understand what I'm signing up for, and and I'm going to fulfill my obligation or what I'm supposed to do, and I signed up to be a company driver, and, and I'm going to be just that. You know what I mean? Now, at times, do things not make sense to me? Of course, right? But that's just that's from me having a fleet of my own. Um, and I've came to find out whenever I have voiced my opinion. And what's crazy is the contractor, they know that I had a fleet. So kind of like whenever I voice my opinion about something, it's kind of like they, they have in the back of their mind too, like, you know, LaShawn had a fleet. So, you know what I'm saying? So similar to what you're saying, like, so you know, we got to kind of keep a close eye on it because he may feel some type of way. And I told them, you know, kind of they don't have to feel that way. I'm, I'm, I understand what I signed up for. Um, and I kind of like allow them to run their business. I don't try to run their business for them. Um, so I just come out, do my job. I get my paycheck, you know, and I, and I go home. I found out that, uh, doing complaining really don't help none. You know what I'm saying? At all, because these people have their own structure similar with me. I have my structure. And when people try to tell me how to run my fleet or how to run my thing, it's kind of like, yo, allow me to do my thing. This is how I want to run it. I don't need nobody to tell me how to run it or what I should be doing. This is how I'm going to run it. And this is what it is. So I understand it. And uh, it's a humbling experience for real, for real, to be honest with you. You've been doing YouTube for quite a while, even even back when doing your 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 prime days and stuff like that, man. You you strikes me as a person that never boast or brag about anything. And even when you had your your fleet, you, you didn't come out and be like, well, yeah, I'm I'm making six figures, and and I'm I'm this big boss man, and this, that, and the third. You you didn't strike me as as that person. You kind of used your platform to show in the beginning your your journey to where you was at, and then midway through you kind of switched up to you know, the business side of things. With that said, again. I appreciate the fact that you didn't brag and boast about the money, how much money you made and how big you are. How do you feel about how do you feel about that? And how do you feel about now seeing a lot of it's it's not so much as YouTube because the golden age of YouTube, I would say, will be about 15 or 16 or between that time before the 20, because now you every everybody's on TikTok bragging, boasting, uh, glorifying, and all that kind of stuff. Where 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 do you feel about all that, and why you didn't participate in any of that? Well, I think with as far as like the bragging and boasting, the thing is like you know you just never know. You know what I'm saying? You end up you know falling on your face because you tried something. Well, you don't want people to come back and be like, hey man, well remember you said you had all of this money and you was, you know, this, that, and the third. So kind of, once again, humbling yourself and, and being thankful for the stuff that you do have and just, you know, not being, not being too much in the limelight. You know, like I, I say all the time, when I created my channel, my channel was meant to educate, right? It was meant to uh, educate people in something that so many people had negative things to say about, which was leasing. So that was the whole objective of my channel was to teach 
or to hopefully help those that were in leases on how to be successful in them. Now, now not everybody's going to be able to take it or not everybody's going to be able to do a lease, uh, just depending on, you know, how you run, how you want to stay out, what your expenses are at home, all this other, see all these extra things. But my channel was never like one of those channels where I wanted to brag and boast. Uh, like I said, it was more so about teaching, uh, talking about generational wealth on how to create you know, money for your children's children, uh, make money for your family, something that your family can be proud of, a name or a brand that you create. And so that's what it was about for me. Um, as far as like all of the, the bragging that goes on on these social media outlets from people, I guess how I look at it is like now social media is, is, I mean, I guess you can say it's always been like a place that people go to seek attention. Um, but now it seems like more than ever, it's definitely a place where people go to seek attention and validation mm -hmm. at times. People mm -hmm. come to, to the internet to try to seek validation to make sure like make them feel good about themselves. Well, you don't need to feel good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You should seek self-validation. Like you should feel mm -hmm. good about yourself um, and what it is that you're doing. And really, you don't need to tell anybody any of that. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time about certain things like, uh, or, you know, you hear this saying all the time, right? Yeah. If you don't put it on the internet, then it ain't true or you ain't real. And it's like, yo, you have to understand how to separate certain personal things that don't need to be hit in the internet and kept to yourself and things that, that can see that, that the internet can have. You let them have that, you know what I mean? But some people don't know how to separate that stuff and they put their entire life all on the internet. And then when mm -hmm. shit goes crashing down and you know, you give everybody a reason to kind of make fun of you. Exactly. Well, you mentioned lease and again, hello, Sean, thanks a lot for coming on and chopping it up with me. I really do appreciate it. You, you mentioned mm -hmm. a little bit about lease and that's where you basically base majority of your content on the, the how the lease purchase work what you need as far as to do a proper lease and if lease is valid what is your feelings on on the company the controversial company super eagle everybody have varies opinions different opinions everybody that tried leasing over there some they some is successful and a whole lot of failures but as a whole what's your thoughts on on the company uh well you know i, I see all the videos that come out about it you know what I mean? and i'll be watching your channel and, and seeing the, the interviews that you do uh with with former drivers of of that place uh and i, and I think it's, it's it's a terrible situation it's tragic um uh, I don't know how companies like that can continue to stay in business. I mean, I get how they're doing it. They just keep, keep on creating these different shell LLCs and stuff like that. And, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, and they just create another one and run it under a different name. But I, for the life of me, I can't figure out how the FCSA has not, you know, caught on to to what these guys are doing and allowing them to get authorities anymore. It's because, I mean, when we talk about, predatory leases, this is where it stems from. You know what I'm saying? Companies like this that take advantage of people um, that keep their paychecks, that don't give them no paycheck and then still, you know, charge all of these million, I mean, it feels like millions of dollars of deductions, but you no know, thousand dollars of deductions that just doesn't make sense. Um, it, it's, it's a bad situation. Um, I hate it for people. I wish that people would take more heed to it. You know, it's enough videos out here, especially on your behalf. Uh, on warning people of not going here, you know what I'm saying, to Super Ego. And it's crazy because every day it feels like every night I, I drive past a, a freaking Super Ego trail. And, and immediately when I drive past what I think, I'm like, damn, are you making any money, you know what I'm saying, over there? But uh, especially from all the videos I've seen, like, it's crazy that people are actually still yeah. out pulling for them uh, with with it being so much negativity around it. Yeah, that no, I'm 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 still surprised myself as many you know, as many former drivers and people that reach out to me that, that tells me their stories and let me know their situations and stuff like that, man, it's still a still a head scratcher on on a lot of these instances. As a matter of fact, there was an abandoned trailer in my neighborhood. Like you know, I, I I do DoorDash over the weekend and I had, it's a McDonald's, right? Right there on the corner of Eddie Road. And when you come around the bridge, is it was a it was a super eagle trailer. Like it was there for like the last three days before my weekend. But the, the person that lives across the street says it been there for a week. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, wow, okay. That that's another trailer that, that's being held hostage by a driver that's not being taken care of. So and it's crazy that 
that's going on over there. And a lot of the people that's that's working there, I know like a handful of them, they, they just go and recover trucks and trailers all day. And I'm just like, how are you guys still in business? <laughs> like y'all y'all losing money on the truck, y'all losing money on the trailer, and I know y'all losing money on the freight, or especially if it's a refrigerated right. flight. <laughs> refrigerated flight. <laughs> flight. Freight. <laughs> a little bit more of your time, bruh. What's I wanna I wanna get your I wanna pick your brain. This came up as well in the in the Facebook circles. Okay. A lot of people that's coming in talking about their experiences and stuff like that and talking about companies that they're driving for, but they're not going into too much detail about the companies. One question that comes up all the time in those groups is they feel that these people are gatekeeping. I'm not sure if you understand what that word is, but it's gatekeeping is the people that don't tell the, about the company or what the company name or how much they're making or whatever the case. I spoke I spoke on it, and I simply said that a lot of people that do gatekeep are the people that they don't want people to, to come and mess up what they got, especially if you're like an influencer or YouTuber or TikToker or something like that. You don't want to turn around and be like, well, I work for such and such and such and such, and then all of a sudden your company get bombarded with caught with BS calls about what you said on your channel or what they see you doing and stuff like that. So that's why a lot of us, especially myself, I I gatekeep. I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna cap. I'm not gonna. I'll tell you about my previous company, but my current company, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm I'm not looking for no referral bonuses or anything like that so that's why i don't i don't promote the company but what's your feelings on gatekeeping hey man listen i i feel like if i think people should if you feel like letting people know about where you're at then feel free to do so if people don't feel like letting you know where they're at and they just kind of like want to you know either make content based around how their day is going without mentioning a company gotta let those people do that um, is it there, you know, they weren't put in that position unless they indicate that they was put in that position to be a recruiter for that company. You know what I mean, so, uh, if they don't want to let you know where they're at is, is, is no harsh feelings. They could explain to everybody what kind of money they're making. And, and I know people get upset like, oh man, you could tell us all that, but you can't tell us how to get in there. Well, listen, fool, I don't want to let you get in here cause you probably going to screw it up. Right? <laughs> so It's like, yo, no, nah, I'm not telling you that I mean, you come in and mess it up for me. You know what I'm right. Nah, I'm, I'm good on that. So who that's gonna fall on? If I bring you in, if I use my clout, my name, and everything, and I bring you in, and you go fuck up the program, who that's gonna fall on? Who that's gonna make it look bad on? It's gonna make it look bad on, on me you. because I brought you in. Yep. And then you got your bosses looking at you side eye. Well, so I, you know, that's why I don't really do a whole lot of. I don't do none of that. And I, and I kind of like got away from doing the referral thing after how Prime did me dirty with right. my referrals. So after that, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing no more referrals, man. And then on top of that, like, like we just finished mentioning, I bring you in here and then you you cut up and act ass. And then I got them looking at me sideways like they can't trust me or rock out with me no more. Nah, I'm good on that. So nah, I ain't giving no, I don't got no referral code for you or nothing. Just put in your application. If they call you dog, Gucci. You know what I'm saying? That's it. I feel it, bro. I did it for them. But. Once I left and you know, the companies that I got with afterwards, I looked at this like, if they're not paying me, like, directly to recruit, then what, what am I doing it for? You know what I'm saying? The referral the referral bonus, I got I to gotta wait for this person to, to do about, what, 90 days, 100 days, six months mm -hmm. to get paid. Like, Okay, well, what happened if I lead the company? Do I still get my Do I still get my cut for bringing these people in? Nah, you Never. got you still got to be Never. you got to be you got to be employed with the company. But I took my time right. to make content to talk about the company in in certain circles. I'm outside hitting the payment, and and I'm not reaping the benefits. I, not right away. I gotta wait. So if that person leaves. I don't get my money. Mm -hmm. And it, it's crazy. I see you guys got budgets. We are a rolling billboard every day. We driving the billboard every day. 
big ass signs, U.S. Yep. Express, Snyder, Prime. Oh, we're rolling billboards every day. Oh, y'all got y'all numbers on the back of the on the back of the truck. So a truck that's behind me, they could just call. Why y'all got all these all these budgets for for print ads, advertisements, and all like that? Why you why you can't just give me make make a side cut and give a budget to to your drivers that are that are willing to promote the company? So just pay us directly. That's that's how I feel. I'm in agreement with you, brother. I mean, to me, I feel like that's the only way to do it. Like you said, they spend millions and or thousands, probably. Mm-hmm. Some of these major carriers spend millions of dollar, dollars on advertising. And, and like, if you would just just give me that and in, in incentive, you know what I'm saying? Just well, listen. When they walk in the door, they get the application. You guys approve them. You know, cut me, run me my bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, run me my bag. I shouldn't have to wait. Oh, he got to do six months here like that. What? Come on, man. That's crazy. But you'll go and put an ad in, in the newspaper or in, the, in these magazines. And you'll the pay them. Don't none of the drivers read. Right. And, but, and, and they get paid. I'm, I'm sure Correct. When, you, when, when you go and be like, get in touch with an advertisement for a magazine or, or for Loves or for anywhere you want to put your advertisement in, I'm sure they're not sitting there being like, oh, okay, well, when somebody calls and pull in an application, <laughs> then we'll get paid. Nah, they asking for right. their money up front. You you want right. this? You want this certain amount of space in our magazine? Fuck you, pay me. You want this allotted time on our on our radio station? Fuck you, pay me. Sponsored ads yeah. on Facebook. Fuck you, pay me. So that's how I feel with us drivers. If if I'm out here talking to these drivers and somebody say, hey, Prime looks like a good company to come work for. What do you think about it, driver? Oh, well, I work for Prime, this, that, and the third. They got a basketball court. They got a workout room, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> You'll enjoy yourself over here, man. And then, bam, I, I, I bring that driver in. I got to wait for him to do a 90-day or something like that just to get paid. No. Fuck you, pay me. Right off the rip. Absolutely. Yeah, pay me right off the rip. All right, Loshan, so I peeped out the latest uh, video, man. I'm, I'm glad every I'm glad everybody all right. It's a it's a two part question from me, but I know you explained it in the video. So if you guys go and check out that video, he was in a recent accident with a group of kids. So go definitely check out uh, that video right quick. You don't have to go into too much detail because you again you did it on your video. But what happened and what was your what was your feelings away from it? Because when truck drivers get into accidents like that, that's involve other people, not just minor accidents that you get in a truck stop or or something like that, but something like what just happened to you. How, how does how does that change you as a truck driver going forward? Yeah, so like so the accident more so, you know, first first thing came on mind, like I said in the video, was just to make sure that everybody was okay. Uh, that there was nobody that was, you know, had fatally passed away from it. Um, and then when I got back to my truck, the second thing was I was pissed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, um, you know, I haven't had no accident since year one of me being out on the road. You know, my, my, my driving career, that was freaking nine years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and then I get back to like my truck and I'm pissed because it's like, these are not just for truck drivers, for CDL holders. These are not just like, you know, call the insurance company, everything is Gucci, you go on about it the next day with your life. Now, this actually messes us up as CDL drivers because we're supposed to be the professional, right? And regardless of the fact of us being a professional and we're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, it hits us hard because it's going to go on our DAC report or it's going to go on, you know, uh, on our scores or for the most part, it's going to go up on your NVR. And that's what pissed me off the most because it's like, so I'm not in the wrong for this accident, but it's still going to show up on my NVR right. as as me being involved in an accident, right? And, and I wasn't even the one that created the accident. I got side swiped, and I'm I'm just you know going down my lane, minding my business, and these kids side swipe my truck. But since I'm a commercial vehicle, hey, now this is going to go on your report. So um, I knew that already, and that's what kind of you know, pissed me off. Is like even with me speaking with the state trooper about it, he's like, "Oh man, it's just going to show up as basically like you hitting a deer, like bruh, hitting a deer." Like yo, that's not how this works. You know what I'm saying? Like apparently you don't know how this works either. You know what I'm saying? Like this reports back as as us as as being a CDL holder being involved in an accident. 
And carriers look at that stuff regardless if you aren't at fault. And then when you're not at fault, then you got to get the police report. And you got to keep that police report mm-hmm. uh, on you at all times because those companies want that. You know, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, they come back and be like, oh, yeah, well, the insurance company wants the police report. And it's like, but I wasn't at fault. It doesn't matter if you're not at fault or not. We still, it's like, yo, okay. You know what I mean? Like, so now I knew immediately when it happened, it was like, yo, damn, man. Now, uh, anytime I want to find another job, I have to keep this police report with me and I have to always provide it like, oh, yeah, whenever I'm talking to him, uh, I, I had an accident. It wasn't my fault, but I got the police report. And, am I good to go? You know, you're kind of holding your breath, hoping like it's, if it's a good company that you're a job that you've been wanting, you're hoping like they say, hey, yeah, no problem. Just send us the, you know, the police report and, and we'll see that it would that you weren't at fault and they, they do accept you. But there are some companies out there that will look at it and be like, ah, you're a risk. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, how am I a risk when I was just going down the road in my lane? So yeah, it pissed me off more than anything because of my profession that I do. And we can't really have these on our on our reports and try to, as professional drivers, avoid these from being on our reports. So, yeah, it, it pissed me off, to be honest with you, um, after I found out and made sure that everybody was was alive. Here's another thing, and thank you, Hello Shine. That's another thing that a lot of drivers that be out here glorifying the industry. This is what y'all don't. This is what y'all don't talk about. Yeah, y'all talk about getting up twerking and 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 truck driving and this, that, and the third. But what 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 happened when you get into an accident? What happened when you get into an accident that's not your fault? What happened if you get into an accident? That was caused by somebody else. Then what? Mm-hmm. Then what? How how is that going to affect your license? I I I've been driving for a long time, and yes, I I got into an accident. And when I was transitioning this year, it it did come up. It did come up. It's on the PSP. It's on the DAC report. All like that. And when the companies I was looking at, that was the first thing that was coming out their mouth. Oh yeah. well. We, we can't mess with you because you had an accident. But, bro, the accident happened five years ago. That was five mm-hmm. years ago. That was in 2019 when that happened. And that wasn't mm-hmm. even my fault. Oh, oh, well, yeah, our insurance isn't going. So I had to flip the script on them. The companies that, that you try to get a hold of, the companies that you want to go with, I flipped the script. Like, hey, man, look, I ain't going to waste your time. This this is what you're going to see on my DAC report. That's why I keep reiterating to everybody that you should pull your DAC report at least once a year. Regardless if you're at a company for X amount of time, still pull your DAC report at least once a year. Even though I feel that the DAC report is garbage because companies could just put and say and do anything on it, try to blacklist you, but at least your, your preemptive strike is okay. This is what they, this is what they see. They see is what I'm going to see. And I could preemptive strike. What, what they going to ask me? Hey, bro, I was in the accident 2019. This is what you're going to see. Bam, bam, boom. A black ops company said that I abandoned the truck. That never happened. Bam, bam, boom. You know what I'm saying? So when you guys do that, you guys will preemptively not waste your time and not waste their time. And that's why when you talk to the recruiters, you stop them right there in their tracks because what they're going to do is they're going to be like, well, we got this and you you can make this kind of money and this, that, and the third. And you like, oh, okay. Then you fill out the application thinking that you about to get into orientation the next day. And then they come back and be like, Oh, well, unfortunately, our insurance, they, they <laughs> said they can't, they won't allow us to bring you on because of, uh, because of information on your background. Well, what information is that, sir? Oh, well, uh, just certain information on your back. Can you be specific, sir? Oh, well, uh, okay. Thank, thank you for your, thank you for wasting my time and yours. So we just keep it moving. Right. So when you, when you guys do you at least pull your DAC report, pull your PSP report. I think your PSP is going to be like $10 or something like that. Your DAC report is free. Your MVR for the first two years is free. If anything after that will cost. Yeah, make sure you, you have all of that and you keep it. You Just like Lo Shine say, keep it. 
because they're going to ask for it. they definitely going to ask for it. So instead of, oh, okay, well, hold on. Let me call. Let me do all that. You already have it. You already have it on a PSP. PSP. I'm thinking video game. You already have it on a, <laughs> You have it on a PDF. You have it in the in your Dropbox. Or get a Dropbox account. Have a small folder in there that have everything in there. Your digital copy of your license. Everything you need so that when they call and they be like they need all that, you can access it and just shoot it over to them right then and there. And then they then you can go and say yay. Or nay, and we don't even have to go no further. Uh, Loshan, again, man, thanks for coming on. Awesome conversation. The takeaway from from the accident, man, again, changes all of us. So, does does that change your 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 focus now as far as driving? Our, we're on focus, but definitely after an accident, it does it does mess with us a little bit as far as is this car on the side of me is going to hit me and stuff like that. Yeah. How what's what's your mentality now as far as this being your first accident and all? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, you know, it still kind of plays back a little bit from time to time, especially when I, you know, I pass by the location every night because it's it is right outside of of the terminal, the, the FedEx terminal. So I pass by it every single night for the most part, and it just kind of like plays back. Like, could I have done anything different? Um, and even with me looking at the dash cam video of it, like there was nothing I could have done different. Like, you know, what I'm saying like I just was young kids driving the car. Uh, the one that was driving the car was a 16 year old girl, had no license. Uh, the car that she was driving no insurance, um, and five pe- five kids in the car, the oldest one being 17, all in there smoking weed. Smoke and weed so, day. yeah. So it, it's just like one of those situations where it's, it's just unfortunate, bro. Oh, man, that that is, that is, wow. Yeah. Part right there is what a lot of us, a lot of truck drivers that be glorifying and stuff like that, that's what they don't talk about. Because I, I guess they never, for those that be like heavy with it, I guess they didn't experience what we went through, what you went through, what when I went through, and and a couple of other people that went through. But this this is something that needs to be talked about. What For sure. What what happened? You, you out there driving all like that and somebody cuts you off, which they, man. They do it all truckers. I got so many saved videos. Not just drop, not just cars, man. Like our own truck drivers do us do us dirty. Like mm. they don't. They, we're taught. We're taught about spacing. We're taught about three, four seconds. My my driver eye camera, which I hate, by the way. I am not a fan of this camera, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it always say, make sure you have safe distance. Make sure you have safe distance. I'm like, I am having safe distance. I got my space. A truck comes right into that space. Like, bro, get, get some distance between us before we, before you get over. And they don't do that. It's crazy. They don't do that. Like, like the tail end of the trailer, if I don't slow down, It'll literally take my take take the right side of my hood out. That's mm-hmm. that's some wild stuff, man. Again, that's man. Old people out here that, that that don't care. 
So it's, it's, it's really, it's really sad that truck drivers, I do that to other truck drivers too. It's just, it's, it's wild. Bro. Thank you, man. I low shine. It's always a pleasure talking with you, man. You got my utmost respect, bro. So thank you. Thank you very much, man, for uh, chopping it up with me this morning, man, giving me the time and uh, and and to chop it up, man. Next time, let's let's do it again, man. And the pleasure is mine. How's your how's your poker game, bro? What, what's going on? You you ready for me yet? Hey, look, I ain't played poker in about a year, but hey, listen, I, I still dust you off in that. I don't, <laughs> don't get it twisted. Bro, don't don't let me get don't let me go all in with Ace King, baby. Oh, that's 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 dead. That's dead. That's dead. I I, I take seven deuce in there. You don't hit no ace, no queen, no no king, no nothing. I hit a deuce and get you out of there. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.